Welcome to the On the Air podcast, a monthly podcast that is a companion to On the Air magazine, a bi-monthly magazine from ARRL for beginner to intermediate ham radio licensees. I'm your host and the editor of On the Air magazine, Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY. Every month, the On the Air podcast extends material found in On the Air magazine to help you learn about the many things that the ham radio hobby and service has to offer. The On the Air podcast is sponsored by ICOM for the love of ham radio. So welcome to the April 2023 episode. This month, we're going to take a closer look at the March-April 2023 issue of On the Air, where we had an article on the incident command system and amateur radio. That went into a bit about the incident command system, or ICS, which is an emergency management system that public safety agencies use to respond to everything from small incidents to large-scale emergencies. And with me today to tell us more about the ICS and where hams fit into it is ARRL Director of Emergency Management, Josh Johnston, KE5MHV. Welcome, Josh. Well, good morning, and thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So um, can you start us off with the basics? What exactly is the incident command system? The incident command system was developed in the 70s um, to create an organizational and a structural approach to managing incidents, whether it be, as you said in the intro, whether it be a small incident all the way up to a large, very complex incident. Um, the Cal, Cal Fire um, out of California mm -hmm. was actually the initial to start naming it and calling it an incident command type system or, or incident, incident command. Um, they began developing the program because of their need to manage um, the amount of uh, people reporting to certain people uh, during an incident. So if you had, uh, you know, the ICS recommendation is, th is three to seven with optimum being five mm -hmm. of people reporting to one person. Um, and they, they began to build that in somewhat of a, of a uh, uh, structural design um, to show how that works. Um, as that was built out, it was eventually adopted post 9-11 um, on the federal level um, through Presidential Directive uh, 5 and 7. Um, the the uh, concept is to, to create a better way to manage and respond to incidents that is understood by all persons that, that could potentially be involved in, in responding or, or providing assistance during that incident. So when you say all persons, um, even though I mentioned that this is something that public service, uh, public safety agencies use, um, when we think of a public safety agency, you know, we think of um, the official stuff, right. like official right. first responder organizations. But uh, when you say that it's, that the ICS is meant to be sort of a, a common system for everybody who's mm -hmm. in a response, then I would imagine that includes folks like ham radio operators. It, it absolutely does. Um, and especially as you get into more of a management level and, 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 and there are level different levels of ICS, mm -hmm. but as you get into to where if you may be a person assigned to an emergency operations center or a command post or mm -hmm. something like that, along with those public safety agencies, we need to be speaking the same commonality, co common terms um, with those personnel as well. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, it's important, and, and that's part of the reason that it's actually in our our ARIES task book. Um, uh, ICS training um, goes from being recommended or, or optional to to required depending on your level that you, if you, by the time you get up to level three, um, the majority of it is required. Um, but uh, but it's, it, it depends on your level of response mm -hmm. as to what level of ICS training you should have. And that's, that's true also even, even in the public safety, um, public safety uh, world. Um, they're, the basic courses are, are you know, basically designed for first new, newly in people that aren't necessarily in the management side. And then as you move up, then there's more, more training required for managing incidents. So when you say 
um, the system's a way of making sure everybody's speaking the same language. Um, I imagine that's things like um, keeping the names and responsibilities of certain positions that's correct. consistent. That's correct. Um, keeping uh, terms of of what what needs to be, terms of um, what tasks are called, what procedures are called, um, keeping that language consistent. Right. It also lays out the positions as to what their responsibilities are. Mm. Um, and so if you're assigned to a certain position, then it, it spells out what the primary responsibilities of that position are as well. I, I know that sometimes um, responses can be uh, different in different parts of the country. Um, I hear about that a lot in terms of folks who do ARIES, um, that, you know, the way ARIES functions in Florida might not be the same way ARIES functions in Oregon. So is the incident command system a way to, to avoid confusion? It'll avoid some confusion, and, and if, depending on the incident, your public safety agencies in either one are going to be following some structure of, of ICS. Mm -hmm. Um, ICS is part of the National Incident Management System, or is a is a off, offshoot of that. And the National Incident Management System kind of overlines how all incidents should be managed and run. Um, and part of what it says is it should be run under with an ICS structure. Um, so while there may be different responses and different roles and different different uses and different levels of government that that areas members or or uh, our you know, personnel may be, may be providing assistance to, it's still um, going to be using the ICS system. I've, I've, I know of wedding planners that use ICS in planning and, and managing a wedding. I mean, um, it's because it's because it, 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 you know, they've got this person that's taking care of this, they've got this person that's taking care of this, they're answering to the manager to the wedding planner, mm -hmm. but she's got two or three people that have got two or three people helping them. You know, there's there's a hair person, there's a there's a makeup person, there's a flower person, and they use they use the ICS structure to to, to manage all of it. So it you know it it can be implemented and and used in many different situations, mm -hmm. and it's actually a fairly simple structure, and the and the structure expands and contracts based on the incident. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a, I'll use a law enforcement scenario for instance, if you have a, a, a police officer on a traffic stop, the single police officer is the incident commander. Mm -hmm. If that same police officer pulls up on a large motor vehicle accident and you've got fire, EMS, so on, there may be some unified command going on there, mm -hmm. which is a whole different term and we won't get into that today. But, but it just depends on what is going on with that incident as far as how much you need to expand or contract and it, and it can expand and contract during an incident. You know, during the height of the incident, it may be a fairly large structure and then by the, by the you know, it may start out with that single officer mm -hmm. or that single fire engine. Um, as it grows, then it may become fairly large and then as the incident begin, begins to scale back down and you begin to, to you know, r release units to, to leave, mm -hmm. then it scales back down. Mm -hmm. So, and that, it, I, that's where it's important for um, amateur volunteers to kind of understand where their role fits in mm -hmm. um, during during that incident as it as it expands and contracts. So, given that the system is scalable um, and can kind of uh, react along with what's happening with an incident, um, where do hams fit in to this system? Well. It's interesting that you ask. <laughs> Just recently, FEMA actually released um, guidelines that include, included the uh, the aux C position, which includes amateur radio. Um, it's the auxiliary communicator, mm -hmm. um, which includes amateur radio, GMRS, different different services that provide assistance um, to public safety. That actually falls um, under the communications unit leader. Mm -hmm. um, which is part of the logistics unit. Now, that being said, in, in some situations, we may have, you may have an amateur radio operator that is assigned to the operations, just providing communications assistance to an operations branch. Mm -hmm. So even though the communications unit is built as, as, as its own unit, mm -hmm. there may be people assigned to 
provide communications assistance in certain situations okay. to operations branch, which could be fire EMS or whoever. But uh, um, primarily, there, it's it's initially built out of the communications unit or out of the out of the logistics unit. Okay. So is um, is this are these situations where hams would find themselves? Um, strictly doing communications? Uh, um, is, it the, is it the kind of thing where sometimes um, on a response, a ham will be called to do something that isn't necessarily um, radio communications? Like, I, I think so, and I think, that's one of the, I think that's one of the things that, that especially our local units, our local um, folks and responders, our, our local hams, need to consider is there there may be needs for them to provide assistance or they may need personnel to help with things that may involve communications but that may not be their sole, sole role um, especially in the area area where you may be assisting with um, with um, sheltering or that kind of thing the communications may happen periodically you know once an hour you're doing a report for something but they may have other things they need you doing between that hour or so um, and it just kind of depends on and th this is where one of the things that i'm really encouraging everybody to do is to build these relationships ahead of time yeah. and even under the ics if, if if the served agency realizes that you've taken the time you've taken the responsibility to get the ICS training, which the initial levels are all available online um, and and free of charge, the the fact that you're willing to do that opens up that door in some cases for you to be able to get plugged in and providing assistance to these served agencies that that we're training and and willing to provide for. So, uh, with regard to the training, um, you said that the that it's available online. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, if a ham is um, emergency preparedness minded, public service minded, um, can a ham undertake that training on their own? Do they have to do it under the auspices of an Aries group? How does it work? Certain levels can do it on their own. Um, you can take the ICS 100, 200, um, and 100 and 700 are the two very basic courses. Mm -hmm. They're the initial level of response. Um, then you move to ICS 200, um, which is which is kind of your next level up, and then ICS 800, which actually lays out the framework for the NIMS, for the National Incident Management. Um, and then the ICS 300 and 400 courses in most areas are only delivered classroom training, and those are usually a two-day and a three-day course. Um, and they're on-site. Both of those are actually fairly, um, in my opinion, 300 I've, I've had both. Um, ICS 300 and 400 um, are both more intense courses. They involved a lot of uh, exercises, in-group exercises, um, and things throughout the course. Um, there's also a number of, of other ICS courses, but they are all available online. Um, you do have to get a uh, FEMA student ID number. But that's you just fill out the fill out an online form, um, and they provide that to you. That's now your your FEMA ID number for life. So and that's that's how they do, and they they did that to get away from in in the past. FEMA used social security numbers, and this is doing away with using the social security numbers and using their own their own numbering system for those courses. So if uh, a ham wants to be of assistance, and they've taken some ICS courses independently. Mm -hmm. um, do they have to join an ARIES group in order to be able to be of service? Not technically, but in many cases that's the best way. Yeah. Um, we encourage that because we encourage not just an individual to walk into an emergency management office. We encourage working with your local emergency coordinator um, or district emergency coordinator, um, depending on the case in, in your area. Um, working through those groups and those people many times can can provide more um, 
more opportunities and more options for where you may, you know, a, a local EC may have four different positions or four different locations they're providing assistance to in it. Even let's talk in the county level. You know, they may be providing assistance at, at a shelter, at an emergency operations center, a field position, mm -hmm. and, you know, some other, maybe two field positions. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're working with that group, he may have everybody he needs at the emergency operations center, he may have everybody he needs at the shelter, but he needs more people out doing field work. Mm -hmm. That's where you can get plugged in to provide more assistance, okay. and that's so, why we encourage. So if you're in an areas group, that way the EC, the emergency coordinator, knows about you right. because you're part of the right. group. Exactly. And they can call upon you exactly. to fill those slots. Okay. Exactly. And that's where the, the importance of the EC um, and, and especially the, the ECDEC and then up to the SEC is really important in each section, so. You mentioned uh, the task book earlier. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about how the, the ARIES task book fits in with all of this training? The, the ARIES task book, for one, and I'm, I'm gonna use it here in front of me so I can make sure I get it right. Um, level one, which is our basic I may not be able to respond, but, but I might be able to provide communications from a home station or something like that. A very, very basic level. Um, recommends the ICS 100 and 700, and then other, other uh, proficiencies, other courses and training, including stormwater, storm spotter, and then of course our EC001 course. Um, at, as you move up to level two, it recommends the, uh, well, it's required to have ICS 100, 200, 700, and 800 are required for level three, as well as at that point in time, it's required to have our AC001 course, mm -hmm. and then recommended the, the optional, uh, the optional uh, Skywarn course. Um, as you move up to level three, for instance, it's going to re recommend all of those courses plus um, another batch of IC of, of IS courses that are available also online. So, it, and then it recommends um, or is optional the the CISA, uh, which is Cyber Infra Infrastructure Security Administration, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, who is charged with the ESF2, which is Emergency Support Function 2. Um, the, their OXCOM course is, is, is recommended as an optional course at level three, um, as well as ICS 300 and 400. Mm -hmm. So as you take those courses, it moves you up in the, in the area where you could be considered to, to, to mm -hmm. perform or to, to, to serve. Okay. Um, so um, I don't know, if, I hope that answered your question. I'm not, I hope. <laughs> and um, so that's the, that's the ICS related material right. that's in the task. That's book. in our, our ARIES, our current ARIES task book as it sets right now. And the, there's also, um, the ARIES task book also has um, practical oh, stuff yes. in Oh, yes, yes, right? there is there's def definitely practical and participation stuff, yeah. participating in NETs, um, um, serving as net control, um, depending on what level, the, uh, these are in level three, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, uh, doing some training and doing some training levels courses. Um, so we're, we're in the process actually of beginning to look at reviewing this task book a little bit. Yeah. For, you know, as, as time moves on, it's, it's been a few years since that's been done. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be looking at whether we wanna keep the way it is, make some improvements to it, add things, take things away. So, but, but as, a, as it stands right now, this is the current book, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so being uh, trained in the ICS and, and really having um, some familiarity with it, this is what's going to get volunteers um, looked at seriously. Yes. This is what's yeah, going to get people and, in the And I mentioned it in here, and I'll go ahead and, and mention here, one of the things we also recommend is the OXCOM course. Yeah. Um, to take the OXCOM course, you do have to be sponsored by an agency. Mm -hmm. So, um, which, which, you know, at that point in time, by the time you get to that point, you should be working with an agency already in some, some realm. Um, and if they so choose, they can send you to the OXCOM course. You, you can complete that course um, as I have. Um, and, uh, you know, 
get that training and certification at that point in time, it may open up more doors to assist even at the state level or, or some of that kind of stuff, depending on your relationships with, with your served agencies that you're with now. Okay. The um, ICS courses, um, about how long is, is one of those courses going to take somebody? Are they self-paced? They're self-paced. Most of them um, one to four hours, depending yeah. on, you know, um, depending on where you are and, and what kind of time and pressure, you know, pressure you put on yourself, whatever. Most of them are not difficult. I would say, I would say the average is a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But they're very, they're very doable. They're, they're yeah. very, they're, they're, you know, and they, and they're, they really help to understand why a served agency may ask you to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they if they say, hey, I need you to do so-and-so, and you're going, what? If you've had the ICS training, you may go, they're needing somebody to cover this. They're needing this done. Or, they're, you know, it just helps to understand what what their responsibilities and their requirements are. So. Okay. So it's uh, it sounds like it's not just um, in, like a straight impartation of information. Right. But, um, it's also... A little bit of a bigger picture as well. It is. It really, really helps to paint a whole picture of, of what's going on, especially if you get into ICS 300 and 400. Mm -hmm. um, as you go up into the levels, the more management level courses, those, and, and he, like I mentioned earlier, those include um, exercises mm -hmm. that are some of them are for some major incidents uh -huh. that you're you're working with a management team to work through that incident, um, and it really helps you to to take a look at the expanding and contracting structure, uh -huh. but it helps you to look at um, all the all the people and positions that may have to be in place if you've got a, a larger scale incident going on. Okay, great. Well, is there a um a URL that you can give folks to find out more about the incident command system? Um, is there a .gov site? There is a .gov. FEMA.gov, I didn't get it. It's, EM, it's .emi. It's the Emergency Management Institute. Honestly, you could Google the or, or just do a, do a search, a web search for uh, uh, Emergency Management Institute IC, IS courses. Okay. And they would come up and your, your starting page and everything would come up right there. All right. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Josh, and telling us more about the ICS. Hope it helped. All right. Thanks. Thanks. The On the Air podcast will be back in May, 73. Seven threes.